Hey Trappers, Dale Billingsley here, Billingsley Brand Lures. So I want to talk to y'all a little bit today about dealing with wised up beaver. Now I'm telling you, I've dealt with some doozies. I personally would rather deal with wised up coyotes any day over wised up beaver. And the, the hardest part about dealing with a wised up beaver is you need to find out first whether that beaver is. is first, is, it, is he lure shy? Is he location shy or is he truly trap shy? And if he's trap shy, what's he trap shy to? Is he trap shy to footholds? Is he shy to conibears? Is he shy to snares? Very seldom do you ever find one that's shy of snares, but once in a while you do. Now, if he is shy of snares, is he shy of snares on dry ground, in the water, or both? Those are things that you have to ask yourself. Those are things you have to find out. And the beaver will tell you you just have to be willing to listen to what he's telling you. He will show you where he wants to die. You just have to be paying attention enough to, to pick up on his cues. So with that being said, I want to let y'all know I'm going to show these sets on dry ground because I don't think they're going to show up in the water and I want to make sure that you get everything that I'm putting to you. Uh, so we're going to do this on dry ground. So bear with me. You might have to use your imagination just a little bit but I believe all of you can do that. So stay with me. Okay guys, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of use our imagination and make believe that this is, this is a beaver dam, this pile of mulch here. Now I'm gonna show you that, in my opinion, not only is it the, the, the right way to put in a dam brake set, but it's the only way to put in a dam brake set and not have a bunch of problems. This is good. You learn how to do this. This is going to eliminate a lot of problems for you right off the get go. Because um, who you know, maybe maybe it was you that that screwed these beaver up. Maybe you pinched them. Maybe you splashed water in their face. By learning how to do this correctly and doing it the right way, it's going to stop all the problems. You're going to kill the beaver, and the job will be done. So the first thing you need to know about a beaver dam. Your water starts up in here, and then, this is perfect, really. The dam tapers down, and then there's another drop-off, okay? And if, if the water's clear, and you can see it, down on that second level, on that second drop-off, that's the channel where the beaver are swimming to check the dam every night. So, by knowing that that's there, we can use that to our advantage. We can use that to catch that beaver. So what I do to make this set, take it, and I'm not a big 330 fan, so I mean, I wanna get that out there in the open right now. I own three of these things and that's it. I'm more of a foothold and a, and a snare man than I am a conibear man. I'm not saying conibears won't work, not saying that you shouldn't use them, but what I am saying is in my experience, especially on a colony, a colony of beaver. When they start seeing their dead relatives laying around with cotter bears on them, they wisen up pretty quick. I like to use footholds and I like to use snares and I don't like, I don't drown my beaver. I hold everything alive. A live beaver up on the bank, the other beaver in the colony, don't pay that much attention to him. On my footholds, I give them all 10 feet of chain or 10 feet of eighth inch cable and I just I let them swim as long as that beaver can go from the bank to the water and back to the bank again that beaver feels safe he's he's okay now he's gonna panic a little bit he's gonna tear the bank up a little bit on you but he's he still feels safe and in the morning when you get there nine out of ten of those beaver in footholds or snares either one are stretched up the bank just as high and as far as they can get rolled up in a ball sleeping where they've spent the night there. Okay? He's gonna, you're gonna walk down to him and he's gonna amble off towards the water and try to swim away and you just get a hold of the chain, hold of the cable, pull him up, dispatch him with a 22 and it's, it's done and it's over with that quick. Put the set right back in. Now you've got a lot of torn up bank and a lot of eye peel. Plus I try to put those sets in close enough together where those were beaver aren't going to tangle with each other but uh, 
you, you've got this live character up here on the bank and he's drawing other beaver in. It's not uncommon to have two, three, four beaver tied up in a row along the edge of a bank there. So that's just something you might want to keep in mind. But anyway, back to the dam break. Sorry, I got sidetracked there. Back to the dam break. So I take a 330 con bear, put it on a stand or a stabilizer, tall sticks, whatever you choose to stabilize that con bear with. It's very important that you stabilize it, okay, somehow. You're going to drop that con bear out here in that second channel, that second, that second drop off, all right? Now, once it's there, and you've got it stable down on the bottom where it needs to be, stay, sit, lay down. And once you've got it where it needs to be in the center of that channel, the center of that groove where those beaver are swimming, then what you're going to do is... You're going to find yourself a couple of dead sticks. And you're going to stick one of them down into the water on the outside edge of where that conibar is. You're going to lay the other one across the top of the water. Kind of float it there. You may have to tie these together so they don't float, so things don't move and float away on you. Okay, this is going to guide our beaver down through that 330. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go over here and you're going to put a small break in that dam. You're going to open it up over there. Then you're going to come behind you and you're going to put a small break over here in that dam. Now, with that being done like that, that beaver hears water moving. He hears running water. He comes, swims down sees the first hole, patches it, but he can still hear water running. So he swims the face of the dam. When he swims the face of the dam, he's coming between the dam and this stick that you put out here over on the other side of your 330. He sees your dive stick across the top, so he goes to the bottom to patch, to go to get over to that other hole to patch it. He's not going to swim around this. It's not natural for him. His, he knows this groove is here. He knows it's there. That's what he's going to do. He's going to swim the face of it, looking for the next breach in the dam. When he swims over here, he's going to dive under that dive stick, go to the bottom, and hit your 330 conibear on his way over to patch that other hole. It's, it's that simple of a set, guys. It's, 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 in my opinion, it's the only way to put in a dam break. If you try knocking a hole here, and you set your conibear up here like this, not all the time, and I'm not saying it doesn't work, but a good majority of the time, your trap's thrown with a bunch of sticks and mud in it, because what they've done is they've started down here, and that's, that's the reason this second drop-off is here. This is where they pushed all the mud and leaves and debris up to make their dam. So he started back here and started pushing mud and sticks up to patch the hole. Well, the first thing he hits is your conibear with a bunch of mud and sticks. Now he's just tripped it. You've splashed water in his face, stung his lips, and he's not coming back. And if he does, he's going to be carrying sticks and mud with him, especially if he's had a bad experience with conibear before. So anyway, that's how I put in a dam break. Now then, you can also put that same set in, like I just showed, using a snare. The only difference is you don't put the dive stick over top. You've still got a pole out here to, to guide your beaver through, but you're using a snare instead of a, instead of a conibear. Because sometimes they get a little waspy to conibears, as we all know. So just take a support wire. You stake your snare up here on the bank, close to the dam, or wherever you can get a stake in that'll hold. Put your 
support wire in, open that loop up, put it on your support wire, then you want that snare loop, I hope this shows up in the camera, I don't know how well it will, but I hope it does, but you want that snare loop to where about half or two thirds of it is underwater. Because when a beaver's swimming, you've naturally got more beaver underwater than what you do on top. When he's swimming, all that's sticking out is his nose, his eyes, and his ears, and that's it. So you've got more beaver underwater. But you put that loop on the surface, and then like I said, just angle it down, set it down to where you're about half or two thirds of the loop is underwater. And that's it. Put your brake in over there, put your brake in behind you, and you're in business. If you happen to miss a beaver this way, you're not spooking him anymore. This is nothing to him. This means nothing. It's not hurting him. It's not splashing water in his face. It's not stinging his nose and his lips when it goes off. He's just brushed it, and it's just something in his way. It's just another vine. Thinks nothing of it, and on his way he goes. Tomorrow morning you come in, you reset it, you make your adjustments where you think you need to, you're back in business. It's that quick. It's that simple. Now we've got a perfect, a perfect uh, example here of a crossover on a dam. And again, this is where your snares come into play. I like to take them snares, push my support wire in, a little bit low there. I like it up just a little bit. Find you a little, and I mean, if he's waspy, now I'm not saying that every beaver you come in contact with is trap shy. That's not what I'm saying. This is for if, if you run onto some that are waspy and know that, and they know the game. You take a little, and I mean something small, just a little subtle guidance. We've already got one in here naturally. They're already used to going through there. Now we've just put one in here, and that's all we've done. We're up about all oh, three inches off of the deck. We've got an eight, about an eight, eight or an eight and a half inch loop hanging there. Again, if you miss one here, it's nothing to him. Doesn't bother him a bit. And that would be the completed set of the crossover. All right, guys, here's another set that I like to use on shied up beaver or beaver in general, as far as that goes. And what I've done, I've taken this dead pole, and you can either put these in yourself, or if you can find a tree growing out in the water, then so much the better. I took two fencing staples. I'll bring it in there a little closer so you can see. I drove one here, and I drove one up here to uh, stabilize my, my support wire for my snare. Now, put this out there in the water. Again, you want that loop about half or two thirds underwater. I've taken a pile of beaver this way, guys, and I mean a pile of them. Get that loop just as close to the edge of that tree as you can possibly get it. Then you put a little lure here, and you put a little lure here, and that's it. That's all there is to it. And I'm telling you, you put a bunch of these in if you can, where you can, and you're going to take a pile of beaver with these. Fast, slick, simple, and effective. He might have smelled lure up on the bank. Maybe that beaver that you're working on trying to catch is a little lure shy. He smelled lure up on the bank, but he's never smelled it out in the water. It's just another trick that you can use. Now I got one more little set that I'll show you using a snare because like I said, a lot of times beaver aren't, they're, they're not shy of snares. Um, and it's just a caster mound, but instead of using a foothold or a conibear in front of it, you just use a snare. And then when you find one that's a little bit goosey of lure, um, and I've seen them to where they wouldn't come to caster at all. You can always use sack oil 
up there and I mean just a drop or two it doesn't take much um, now I, I'm gonna put this out there but I'm telling you this it, 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 here comes the shit sandwich okay I have a lure that I make that I call beaver eliminator now here's here's the the bad part of it one one of the bad side all right it's not cheap okay it's not cheap at all and it's forty dollars for a four ounce squirt bottle of it now the good part of the sandwich it only takes a drop or two now for the other bad part of the sandwich it's at a very limited quantity okay so i just wanted to put all that out there the beaver eliminator will sure enough they it's complete it smells like a beaver but it's completely different and unique okay so now that's over that's the only time you're probably ever going to hear me give a lure plug guys and i don't mean to do that but i just wanted to put it out there that it is available like i said though it is a very limited quantity uh and all i do if we're gonna make this as our as a bank now instead of a instead of a, a dam but i just slick up a spot make it look like a beaver went up there clear it out slick it up hang that snare down there at the water's edge just uh just like we have been only just you're just at the water's edge you're not out in the water then about 18 inches to two feet up on the bank just give a drop or two of sack oil or or a beaver lure, a beaver eliminator. I don't care what it is. It doesn't matter. As long as you know that beaver's not going to be shy of it. You don't really need any guiding. He's going to come, he's either going to come up that slick spot to investigate your lure or he's going to come back down that way. One of the two. Um, and that's all there is to it. It's very simple, very slick, very easy. You've left very little disturbance to put that beaver on edge, and that's how you do it. All right, guys, that kind of concludes this video. Uh, I sure appreciate y'all taking time to watch it. I hope it's been helpful to some of you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below for me. I will sure enough answer them just as fast as I can. Uh, once again, this is Dale Billingsley with another one, signing out.